Malacanang denies President Rodrigo Duterte's campaign ever transacted with Cambridge Analytica for election-related services. This after reports linked Strategic Communications Laboratories, the parent company of Cambridge Analytica, to Duterte Associates and some members of his campaign team. Aside from key members of the campaign team meeting with suspended Cambridge Analytica CEO Alexander Nixon 2015, local political consultancy firm Estrategia is listed as a Philippine partner of SEL. Estrategia's incorporator and director Ray Faisal Ponce Millan is a friend of Duterte and hails from Davao. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque, quoting Finance Secretary Sonny Dominguez, says the Duterte campaign team did not pay anything to Cambridge Analytica. The reports came after Facebook admitted about 1.17 million Filipino users may have had their Facebook information improperly shared with Cambridge Analytica. In the data harvesting scandal, the Philippines was second to the United States in terms of the number of people whose data was compromised. But Roque says Duterte won the 2016 elections fair and square and had so much organic support that the campaign team had no need to use any information from Cambridge Analytica. Estrategia admits SEL reached out to them for a possible partnership but says nothing materialized after the representatives' meeting with Nixon 2015. Estrategia is still identified as the Philippine office of SEL on SEL's website. Senator Antonio Chilianes says he will call for a Senate probe into the role of Cambridge Analytica in the 2016 presidential elections. Chilianes says, quote, It was only Duterte who spread fake news during the campaign, and it's his people who are now being linked to the Cambridge Analytica issue. Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno on Tuesday clashes with her bitterest rival, Associate Justice Teresita Leonardo de Castro, during the oral arguments for the Co Waranto petition to remove the chief magistrate. De Castro was the first justice to interpolate Sereno. The two justices argue for two hours and 30 minutes, bickering and often interrupting each other. The interpolation revolves around Sereno's statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth that she submitted to the SC when she was appointed associate justice in August 2010. That was supposed to be her entry sal N. De Castro says instead of filing a sal N as of August 2010, Sereno only submitted a sal N as of December 2009. Serena says, quote, Your interpretation of the law is absurd. It does not make sense and it is oppressive. She adds, quote, Republic Act 6713 only says a sal N must be filed within 30 days after assumption of office. Nowhere does it say it has to be on the date of assumption of office. Serena also says she believes she was required to file a sal N that covered the end of the preceding year. But the caster says that while the law does not go into detail, the implementers of the law have always required an entry sal N that is up to the date of the appointment. She says, quote, It doesn't make sense that you don't file a sal N for the date as of your appointment because you may have acquired assets, so it will not be accurate. Serena disagrees, saying she rushed the submission of her sal Ns because the SC was already preparing for oral arguments on the Hacienda Luisita case. De Castro then tells Serena, quote, You are making a lot of excuses and blaming others, blaming the Chief Justice Corona for not calling your attention. Serena says her submission complies with the spirit of the law, which is to be transparent about her wealth. Non-submission is a ground for removal in the Coal Warranto petition. Sereno says the JBC accepted her substantial compliance when she explained that it was infeasible to recover some of her missing cell ends. The Sandigan Bayan denies the motion of alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Limnapolis to be transferred to a safe house of the Justice Department's Witness Protection Program. The Anti-Graft Court's First Division cites the provision in the WPP law that prevents the DOJ from taking custody of a detained witness. Napolis is currently detained at the Camp Bagundiwa in Taguig under the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. Former Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre earlier granted Napolis entry to the WPP. She then filed motions to move out of jail before the three divisions of the Sandigan Bayan handling her plunder charges. The third and fifth divisions still have to rule on the motions, but under the rules, once one division denies, she's effectively prevented from moving out of jail. New Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara says he wants to turn the Justice Department into a cornerstone of the country's justice system. Guevara takes over a DOJ still reeling from back-to-back -back controversies under his predecessor Vitaliano Aguirre. Before Aguirre resigned, he was under fire for a DOJ panel's dismissal of drug trade charges against alleged Visayan drug lords Peter Lim and Kerwin Espinosa. After President Rodrigo Duterte himself indirectly threatened to fire him, Aguirre junked the dismissal and assembled a new prosecution panel to conduct a fresh investigation into the case. Guevara says he will talk to the panel members as soon as he assumes his new post. 
Weeks before his resignation, Aguirre brokered a deal between the government and alleged pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Limnopoulos by putting her under state protection in exchange for a new affidavit that would target allies of the Aquino administration. Under Aguirre, the DOJ was about to conduct a reinvestigation of the pork barrel scam without the participation of the Office of the Ombudsman, even though the law states that the DOJ would have to later transmit its findings to the Ombudsman. Guevara says he will bring back the Ombudsman's special prosecutors to the case. Guevara also says he will review the state protection given to Napolis. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un acknowledges the prospect of talks with the United States for the first time Monday. State KCNA news agency says Kim discussed the prospect of the DPRK-US dialogue with party officials. He supposedly delivered a report on the development of the recent situation on the Korean peninsula. Last month, U.S. President Donald Trump agreed to a landmark summit with Kim to discuss denuclearization. But North Korea remained publicly silent for weeks after its leader's invitation to talks was first delivered to Trump by South Korean officials. This fueled concerns in Washington that Seoul overstated Pyongyang's willingness to negotiate over its own nuclear arsenal. Trump on Monday says he planned to meet Kim in May or early June. Trump says, quote, I think there will be great respect paid by both parties and hopefully there will be a deal on denuking. Mm-hmm. 